What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds, where we are back at it again with another Copart walk around over here at 2829 Southeast 15th Street, Dell City, Oklahoma. Big shout out to Copart for letting us do this now. Let's jump right into this, guys. Number one on my list is a 2011 Camaro 2SS. It says it's a start, but not a drive. Um, I think we'll see why here in just a minute. Boy, the roof got... Uh, when you see buckles in the roof, that's concerning, okay? There's more to this car than meets the eye. I don't think those are just dents in the roof. Whoa, shit. Holy crap, look at that spider. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, uh-uh. Uh-uh, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that, man. I felt the spider webs like I walked right into his web. I don't I don't like that at all. All right, we'll just we'll just look at it from this side. Hold on. Okay, I thought I saw another spider. <laughs> all right, so obviously this wheel right here took a a nasty hit onto something. Uh looks like maybe it had aftermarket ball joints, maybe aftermarket tire. You can see the spindle is disintegrated. There's nothing left. Wow, brake lines gone, caliper, everything. Everything is just gone under here. So there's your frame rail. I don't see any marks on the frame rail, but where you do run into a problem, which is probably part of what totaled it, is everything under here, you can see the wheel obviously crunched right into here and just damaged everything. Now, this is all covered up with plastics anyway. You'll never see this, so it's not that big of a deal. The door took a nice little hit to it so it's missing a piece so the door need to be replaced um a pillars got some damage but really i don't see anything that bad then you got your fender apron here and it's taken some damage too you can see it's actually bent right here it's been pushed in so again you know you would not necessarily have to replace this you could probably put this whole thing back together and it'd probably be okay i would guess but uh <laughs> this is going to need some work guys it's going to need some work obviously the whole suspension on that side is done and it's got over a hundred thousand miles on it so it's easy to understand why they uh why they totaled it just makes you wonder like what happened though you know what i mean like what and normally you find a lot of parts in here i don't see any of the uh i don't see any of the parts like the fender the wheel heads up display this is nice this is real nice it doesn't look like anybody's even attempted to start it yet so why don't why don't we be the first there we go oh she sounds good she sounds real good let's turn that air conditioning down some so we can listen to this check engine light tire pressure brake fluid low yeah i <laughs> I imagine the brake fluid is low. It's missing a whole line. She sounds good. She sounds good. Let's pop the hood. I'm watching that damn spider. Keeping my eye on him. All right. She runs great, man. She really does. She runs real good. It's quiet. Yeah, I would I would be willing to bet that you could bolt everything back up to this and it'd probably fit just fine. It'd probably be okay, guys. Man, she sounds nice. But this is what's concerning to me. Why is the roof buckled? Because I don't see any damage to the car that should have caused the frame or anything to twist to the point where it would actually start buckling the roof. Now, it's possible these dents were already there. I, I'm not sure how you get these massive, you know, dings all over the roof, but... It's possible, I guess, that, that they were already there. Okay, 
Well, obviously we can't really make it move. I'm not even going to put it in gear. I have no doubt that it would go into gear, but I'm not, I'm not gonna try. I don't wanna drag it across the ground or anything like that. Um, I really, I don't have any intention of bidding on this one. Honestly, I don't. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna put it in gear and risk doing anything crazy to it. So we'll go ahead and shut this bad boy off. And we will move on to the next one. Next on my list is an 09 BMW M3. I'm kidding. It's the poor man's M3. It's the 335. These are fun cars. I would love to have one. This one's here because of hail. That's good, right? I mean, so it should run and drive exactly the way it did before it was totaled. Um, significant hail damage. And the mileage is a little high. 166,000 miles on the odometer. I think this is an automatic. It'd be If it was a stick shift, this would be game on. But uh, I'm pretty sure this is an auto. Yeah, I guarantee you this is going to be an auto. I haven't figured out how I'm going to get over to the car just yet uh, without getting completely soaked. I'm wondering if maybe, maybe I can get to it over here. Yeah, there we go. Watching out for spiders, of course. Tires look... You know, decent. It's got a set of Raptor tires. The hail took out some of these covers for the retractable roof. There's a spring hanging out here, so that may or may not affect the roof's ability to open and function properly. Let's climb in here and, oh boy. It's got power. I don't really want to climb over these seats, but I think I'm not going to have much of a choice if we want to hear it run. Uh, <laughs> this is... Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, well, she fired right up. Brake and drive control system malfunction. Reduced braking and driving stability. Okay, typical BMW. So, brake, ABS, tire pressure, traction control, all of those fun things are on. But, aside from that, it actually sounds pretty decent. Let me see if I can get my leg. There we go. Uh, oh, shoot. Oops. That was my bad. That was my bad. All right. So this has got your split screen eye drive, which is really cool. I think this is the one that everybody wants. Let's see if the air conditioning works because that's an absolute necessity. And then I'm not gonna try to mess with the top. I'm not getting out into that, guys. That's not happening. I will pop the hood, but I, I ain't gonna try to step it now. I'm gonna have to climb over these damn seats again. So the windshield was taken out. It's got a good ding in it right there. The AC is functioning, so it has nice cold air conditioning. What about this window? Yes, this window works. That window works. That's important. I hear a chatter from the engine. Goes right into reverse. Yep. Drive. Yep. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to... I was going to try to swing that door closed. Maybe I can get out of this mess right here. <laughs> I was hoping maybe I could drive it forward enough that I could uh, step out of this. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. Okay. Boy, it chatters. She chatters a lot, actually. I don't like, I don't like that at all. You got your paddle shifters right here, guys. Look at that. Yeah, I like this car. I do. I really like this car. I think this would be a blast. Power steering. It's very tight. It's got very, very tight steering. Interior looks to be in pretty decent condition. Uh, the convertible top. Uh, no. No, not going to try it. All right. Let it, let's... Uh, uh, man. Aren't you supposed to have the damn key plugged into the, uh, to the thing or... No. All right. Let's uh 
climb out. I'm not going to close that door all the way. I'm always leery of the car locking itself with the keys in it. Okay. You got to love these European cars. They love to hide the hood latch. You never know where it's going to be. Ooh, boy. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Now... I have watched legit street cars for a while now, and I've seen him work on these. And thanks to him, I think I could do this myself. I'm totally kidding. Um, I watched him recently. I don't remember who's, I think it was Sam Crack, the one that was donated to Sam Crack. I watched him work on one, and it's pretty interesting. All of the, uh, the vacuum lines and everything that run to the turbos, to actuators, coil pack assembly, the fuel rails that were uh, leaking with the, fu the fuel injectors that were leaking in the fuel rails. There's oil everywhere, which again was pretty common on the one Sam Crack had as well. Uh, the difference is I feel like Sam Crack's was probably pretty well maintained, and this one was not. This one was not well maintained, so and you hear that chatter. Uh, I don't know, it could be a timing chain rattling around in there. I definitely smell oil <laughs> like immediately you get a you get a whiff of oil I don't know guys I think this is probably gonna be one of those troublesome cars you know what I mean this is one that's going to uh, uh, make you wish you hadn't bought it so as much as I would like to bring this to the channel guys I don't think I'm gonna mess with it doesn't sound like something that I'd want to screw with moving on to the next one Next on my list, an 82 Chevy G10. Uh, first, I have to figure out how to get through here without getting sliced. And then, boy, they got this thing packed in here tight. Packed in here real tight. It's listed as having 30,000... Oh, damn it. Another freaking spider web. Are you serious? Can you guys tell I'm not a big fan of spiders, okay? So now y'all know. If you didn't know, now you know I don't like spiders. I definitely don't like walking into their damn webs. Okay, this is a non-runner. She's got rust. Lots of cancer right there. Hand cook or hand cook. Hand cook cook tires. Busted out window. Wing windows busted out. Uh, see what the rest of the van looks like. If I can get through here without running into a spider web, that'd be great. It's listed as a non-runner, and I have no doubt that it doesn't run. Uh, we'll go ahead and try it anyway, though. Electronic spark control. Oh, boy. No, that door is not working. It's probably locked. Hey, that door works, though. In fact, it works very well. Okay, so it looks like it was used as a cargo van. No surprise there, right? Actually, the interior looks pretty damn good. Oh, the steering column's busted. Yeah, the steering column's busted. So somebody stole it. I don't believe this is an insurance, is it? Maybe it is. Maybe this is a salvage title. I should probably pay more attention to that kind of thing. Yeah, this ain't 30,000 miles, guys. Oh, boy. Yeah. Someone broke the column. Uh, it's 103,000. I wasn't 30,000 miles. It's 3,064 miles. So it's probably 103, 203,000 miles. Uh, yeah, somebody got under here. And they got straight to the uh, ignition switch. Which is... There's a rod under here somewhere. It's been so long since I messed with one of these guys. I honestly can't remember. It probably will run, though. I would almost bet that it would that it would run. So somebody smashed out the window, unlocked it, and then stole. Uh, look at this. The floor is rotted straight through. Like you can literally see the floor. I mean the ground from in here. So yeah, somebody came in here, pulled this whole thing apart, got to the ignition switch, which is somewhere down there. I don't know. I'm not going to break. I didn't do it, guys. It's already broken. Somebody already came in here and just totally wrecked this thing. Next, we've shown this before, but I'm going to show it again because it's finally up for auction. It's an 87 Mercedes 560 SEL 
with 285,000 miles on the odometer. And the rear end looks like it is, it almost looks like the Coronet as low as it's sitting. Uh, the rear end is, is very, very low. So I'm going to guess that maybe these cars had an issue with, uh, with, with the back ends rotting out or something. Something had to happen for this back end to be sitting so low and the front end to be sitting so high. Now, it's got a good set of tires, very good set of Firestones, so it looks like somebody had planned on doing something with it at some point. On the windshield, it's listed as a non-runner, but... Uh, no, you're not going to open? Uh-oh. Well, we were able to open it last time. Uh, it was originally listed as a non-runner. Now it is listed as a run and drive. Which key is it here? This thing's got so many damn keys. Is it this key? It's not that key. Is it this key? I already tried that key and it didn't fit. No, it's not that key. Is it this key? One of these keys, there we go. Oh, okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Oh, it didn't do that last time. Last time it fired up and ran. Ah, interesting. So something has changed since the last time we were here. I'll give it some throttle. And see if we can kind of keep her going there for a minute. She'll get up to 2,000 RPM. 25. I mean, honestly, guys, I think she just needs fresh gas. I'll bet this thing has been sitting for like 100 years. She just wants some fresh fuel, man. You can see all the leaves, the pine needles and everything that are stacked up back here. We've got antifreeze, 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 oil, and I think a little bit of transmission fluid. Looks like we got an old bumper jack and some jumper cables there. Hey, somebody knew this car. They were like, no, nah, I'm prepared for everything. It's idling very well. But again, guys, there's no profit in this car. There's, it's just too far gone. The interior is too far gone. What is this? A K40. Oh, it's a radar detector. I wonder if that's relevant today. A K40. We'll, we'll go ahead. You guys want to try the air conditioning? Let's, uh... Oh, no, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, there's nothing. Okay, we've got a electronic Becker Grand Prix radio. No, doesn't do nothing either, huh? Nothing. Hey, some of these parts might be worth something as nostalgia, you know what I mean? Somebody might be like, I gotta have that old stereo, man. Oil pressure is through the roof, good. Temperature's coming up nicely. And she will, you can get her to go up to about 2,500. And that's about as high as she'll go. So I'm certain she's got some, uh, some fuel issues. Lights seem to work. The signals work. And she stays running and this window works. So I mean, maybe that window works too. Yes, it does. Okay, we got your little safety belt warning lights over here. And we've got a swimming pool. You know, maybe it's, it's like a portable shower, I think. None of that works at all. I don't know, guys. Look at the smoke coming out from under there. My goodness. Yeah. And I know as soon as we shut it off, it's, gonna, it's not going to start back up again. We'll go ahead and shut it off, though. Yeah. Dead as a doornail. She needs a battery for sure. This car needs about a million and one things. I hate seeing it sit here and just kind of rotten like this because you and I both know where this car is headed. This car is headed to the scrapper where it's going to be torn apart. I think that's sad because I really do think if you put some fresh fuel in it, 
it could probably turn into a, a runner and a driver. Unfortunately, there's just there's just too much that this car needs. Comment below. What do you guys think? Should we make an attempt at saving the old girl, or should we just let her rest in peace, or rot in peace in this case? Moving on. Last on my list for today, guys, a 2014 Nissan Rogue. This is interesting, not because it's a Nissan Rogue. It's interesting because it's a donation, and it's got low miles. Hmm. And it's got new tires. BF Goodrich at that. They're BF Goodrich, BF Goodrich, BF Goodrich Advantage TA Sport LT with some wildly aggressive looking tread. Look at the tread on this, man. That's 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 kind of wild. All right. Tires are dated 19th week of 2017. All right. So these tires were put on the car when it was three years old. It's got a little bit of damage back here. This may have been a grandma car, guys. This may have been a grandma car. It's got the typical bumps and bruises all over it that make you think that. Looks like it was probably taken care of. Let's check out the interior. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, wow. It's a little dirty. Um, sometimes the windows get left down, and as you can see, there's a little rust down here. Okay, so I'm going to guess at some point the windows got left down between this thing going from whoever owned it to where it went up for donation. I'm going to bet that at some point someone had left a window down. This is interesting. I like this one. Okay, I hear some funny noises. Let's turn down the air conditioning a little bit. I would imagine the AC probably works in this. Service due now, maintenance tire. Uh, it does show 103,391 miles. We have a TPMS light. We have an airbag light. We have a maintenance light. The AC does not appear to be getting cold. It's got the books. And I hear a weird noise. That sounds like a heat shield rattling. You've got all-wheel drive lock. Does it go into gear? It does. But I still hear this funky noise coming from under the hood. AC does not work. The important window does work. A little damage to the front there as well. Some rust bubbles, pitting starting right there. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, you're making some funky noises. Sound like you're a tad bit on the pissed off side. But I don't see any leaks at all, none. Like I said, AC's not on, the compressor is not coming on, so it's definitely something going on with the air conditioning. The uh, rust that I'm seeing up here, though, is that of a northern car. Maybe it didn't spend its whole life in the rust belt, but it definitely spent some time in the rust belt. Autocraft Gold. It's a, that's a decent battery from Advanced Auto Parts. She runs well though, guys. She does. I mean, it may, I don't know what that noise is. It's may, it could be something as simple as an idler or a tensioner pulley. A little bit of damage back there, but overall, the body looks decent. The tires are good. Air conditioning, who knows? It could just need a charge or it could have a bad compressor clutch. It's really impossible to say, but it's always interesting to find these donation vehicles, especially ones that are newer like this, because it really makes you wonder, like, why why was it donated? You know what I mean? Was there something so wrong with it? And that's what always concerns me. Was there something so wrong with it that they couldn't sell it, they couldn't trade it in, so they ended up just donating it and trying to get a tax deduction out of it? Now that I think about it, that sounds like a pulley. 
I hope you guys can hear that. The engine sounds like it runs fine. It sounds like a healthy motor. It started right up on its own and there's no check engine lights. That's another big deal. No check engine light means there shouldn't be a transmission code or something where you're gonna be surprised with a bad transmission. When they fire up on their own like this, generally speaking, uh, the codes are still stored and if there's a transmission problem, it's gonna pop up right there. I bet that's just a pulley. What do you guys think? This one might be worth taking a risk on. This one really might be worth taking a risk on. It needs a light cleaning, but I mean, really nothing serious at all. You could probably just roll this thing through a car wash, put some tire shine on it, and she'd be good to go. All right, moving on to the next one. Who am I kidding, guys? I'm totally out of it today, man. There is no next one. That was the end, the Nissan Rogue. I'm going to keep my eyes on it. It's almost time to get back there and start bidding, so I'm going to have to bounce up out of here. I appreciate y'all for watching. Thank you to all of you for making this possible. Thank you to Copart for allowing us to come out here and do this. If you enjoy the content, please give the video a big thumbs up. Don't forget you can subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on the latest videos. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Auto Auction Rebuilds, where you can see all kinds of cool pictures and stuff that I do long before you're ever gonna see it on YouTube. That's Auto Auction Rebuilds on Facebook and Instagram. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you again for watching. Until next time, stay safe out there. I'll catch you all very soon in the next one.